My name's Aaron Lewis and I'm making a video about the vocational education reforms that may be happening in New Zealand. Oh, what an exciting topic you may say. Exciting, I don't know, but it's most certainly important and it's a topic I know a little bit about and something that affects me directly and it actually affects a heck of a lot of us. So for right or for wrong, the New Zealand government has decided that they're going to look at a reform of the vocational education system in our country. Vocational education, you say, what is it? So it's not schools, it's not universities, it's all the training in between. The likes of our trades, ITOs, Polytechs, all of those sorts of institutions that help train our people for the various industries throughout our country. So, a very, very important topic because it affects a heck of a lot of us. Why have I decided to talk on the topic? Well, like a lot of people, I wear many hats. And the first hat that I wear is that I am a tradesman. And as a tradesman, I'm most certainly going to be training apprentices moving forward. And if I am training apprentices, I want to make sure that the system upon which we're training those apprentices is really, really good. It trains well, it's effective for us to follow, and that we can make sure that we're creating great builders for the future. Another big reason why I'm so interested in these reforms is that I am the owner of a small to medium enterprise. Basically, I own a small business, a small construction company, sort of eight to 16 employees. There's heaps of us around the country going through doing our business and doing our part for construction and trying to make a buck along the way. The key thing to making a buck, as we all know, is our employees. Not just us, I can't do everything. It's absolutely critical that I have really, really good people in behind me. And I do, I have some fantastic employees. So I'm very, very lucky. The thing is, is that things change. People move on, they get business opportunities, they get new job opportunities. And as a small to medium enterprise, you can't always compete with that. You can't always just pay more. So it's critically important that we have a really, really good training system in place. So if the government's gonna go and make some wide reaching fundamental changes to the way that we're doing things, especially ones as big as this, as a small to medium business owner, I need to know that those changes are really really good for what we're doing. Okay, another reason why I'm interested in this topic is because I am a member of a national advisory group representing the construction industry. So I'm a member of the national advisory group for the cement and concrete industry. In fact, I've been working with the BCIDO for the last 12 years, so I'm actually now the chairman of the national advisory group. It's a position I really, really enjoy because as an industry, like all of the industries associated with the BCIDO, we get to have our say. We're regularly invited in. We're regularly asked our opinion. What do we want from training? How do we want to train our people? And they'll show us how that can work in the current frameworks associated with vocational training. And nine times out of 10, they make it happen. Over a period of time, we've managed to develop really really good cement and concrete qualification it's now going out there there's thousands of cement and concrete workers in New Zealand unqualified and these opportunities all just sit there ready to be taken up so a change in vocational training that's a massive thing especially a change as big as what they're proposing is it the right thing to do I have to think about how that will affect the cement and concrete industry as well so aside from the other hats that I wear as a tradesman and a small business owner and a member of a national advisory group, I guess the next thing to discuss is what are these changes all about? But before I do that, I'm just gonna make myself a little bit more comfortable. Ooh, that's better. So these changes, what are they? When the government started reviewing our education system and most aspects of our education system in late 2017, I said that we wanted to build the world's best education system for people of all ages from top to bottom. I also said that to do that we needed to collaborate across the system with providers, educators, learners, employers, industry, Māori, iwi and communities. The proposals do go further than some of the early options we considered. The changes that we're proposing have three main components. Our first proposal is to create clearer roles for industry and for providers. To achieve this, the government's first proposal is to give industry an increased leadership role in vocational education, 
and reshape ITOs into industry skill bodies that will focus on four key areas. First, skills leadership and coordinating industry efforts to plan for future skill needs. Second, setting standards and approving qualifications for both on and off job learning. Third, working with new centres of vocational excellence to support high quality programmes and core curricula. And fourth, taking a greater role in advising the Tertiary Education Commission and the system as a whole about funding and purchasing decisions. Existing ITOs will have the opportunity to apply to be recognised as industry skills bodies. The second proposal is the establishment of the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology. The government wants a vocational education system that delivers more for our regions, so that every learner has more and better choices in accessing quality vocational education and teaching where they live and where they work. The government's proposal is to create a single Institute of Skills and Technology that is distributed across a network to offer high quality vocational education throughout New Zealand. It would transform the current regional network of 16 individual institutions into regional campuses of a new nationwide institute. The size and scale of the new institute would allow greater and faster improvements to provision nationwide. This will mean that local communities and regions have more choice and thanks to the industry skills bodies work, more confidence that the skills vocational learners develop are the skills that the workforce needs. Our third major proposal is a new unified funding system. A single funding system is needed to replace the two different funding systems that are currently drawing providers and industry apart. Creating one funding system for vocational education will ensure that learners get the skills and experience and the support they need to be successful, providers to have the funding they need to be sustainable and to support our regions, and industry skills bodies to have the funding they need to fulfil their roles. This is a once in a generation chance to help design the world class vocational education system that New Zealanders need and deserve. A system that will work for everyone with strong industry leadership, sustainable campuses throughout the country, strengthened provision of education in the regions, and flexible funding that can adjust to the changing needs of employers, the economy and learners. I encourage every New Zealander to participate in this consultation process, to share your views about how New Zealand can build a vocational education system that we as a country can be proud of. Okay, so as you can see from what they're saying there, it is a really, really important issue. It's definitely an issue they care about. Absolutely no one's going to go into this sort of process, especially a government going, hmm, let's go in and purposely ruin this industry. It's not going to happen like that. They don't want it. They're consulting. They're asking our opinions. So my final thing to say is, just be really, really sure that this is the right thing to do. That by fundamentally changing everything, we're not going to take so much away from what's already being done in order to think of the future in a few years time. Because the future is also pretty much right now. And it's really important we don't de destabilize that. We don't want to try and create a repair for a problem by creating more problems. And the last thing we need to have happen is have employers steer away from training. There are too many other distractions in this world, too many pressures, too many other things going on in so many industries that make it so easy that if something becomes difficult or takes too long, then people will just ignore it. And they won't have the uptake required or the energy required to learn something completely new. So, even if we do do something completely new, if at the very least, if you could make it as similar and as familiar to what we already have, would be really, really good. Just with improvements, which begs the question, why don't we just fix what we've got?